Okay, so welcome to the fourth lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about volcanoes and people. So volcanoes are interesting, fascinating, in fact, and arrestingly beautiful geological structures. Um, but they're also incredibly dangerous, right? They, they, they produce hazards, they generate risk, and they cause disasters. So one, one might ask the question, what are the positives and negatives around uh, living near a volcano. So, so I, I, I'm very lucky that I get to work a lot in Central America and part of my work is talking to communities around the questions, you know, why do you live here? When do you evacuate? A, 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 and, and the local communities have an incredible insight into the way volcanoes behave but also how they are perceived. And there are lots of negatives around living around a volcano. Um, the, um, the terrain is often very rugged, particularly for uh, composite volcanoes with steep sides. So in the areas where I work, it's actually quite hard work to get around. The roads aren't necessarily particularly good. Um, and, and you can see lots of reasons why actually living near a volcano is quite hard. One of the things we should certainly talk about is the fact that if you've got a steep-sided volcano in a subduction zone, it's likely to produce a lot of ash. That ash is erupted into the atmosphere, but then rains out, right? It falls out of the sky and settles on the ground. And any sort of wind passing over that ash tends to remobilize it, tends to pick it up. And what that means is that uh, the local communities are often regularly breathing in lots and lots of ash particles. And, and ash particles are basically made up of glass and crystals and they're really not very good for your lungs. So one of the things communities have to deal with potentially is poorer respiratory health. Okay, there are ways to mitigate that. One can wear a mask, obviously, um, but actually it is a problem that is regularly seen in communities that live near ash producing volcanoes. However, that ash also has some benefit, right? So when ash rains out, if it's not remobilized, it gets incorporated into soil. And actually, because it's incredibly rich in nutrients, it produces really high quality soil. So if you or your parents are like me, big fan of coffee, a lot of really good coffee is grown on the flanks of volcanoes. That's for two reasons. Firstly, the soil is really good. And secondly, because volcanoes tend to be quite high and the best coffee grows at high altitude. Volcanoes also typically stick up into the atmosphere quite some way. And what that tends to do, particularly in the tropics, is make rain, okay? So warm, moist air passes up the, the flank of a volcano and it gets to a certain altitude, clouds form, and then it rains. And what that means again is that the, the flanks of a volcano are really, really great places to grow things. Volcanoes also have a really strong spiritual impact on communities. Communities tend to be enamored with volcanoes. They tend to be proud to live near volcanoes, although sometimes it's very difficult. And the volcano is much more than just a lump of rock, right? It's something important to them. It's their history. And, and, and they have a very, very strong affinity for the volcano, even though the volcano's activity isn't always benign. It's important to try and put ourselves in the shoes of the people that live around volcanoes. And, and the way to do that is actually to think of both the positives and the negatives. Another reason uh, we might feel positively about volcanoes, apart from their arresting beauty, is that actually they're really strong pools for tourism. Okay, so we can get money from tourists into places which are occasionally, or generally actually, sometimes rather impoverished. And it's a really good way for people to learn about volcanoes and their risks and hazards, but actually while supporting local communities. So tourism, in the places I work is a real boon for the local communities, right? It's important that tourists go there, they, they bring um, money, and that, that helps the local economy greatly. So there, tourism isn't always a great thing, 
often tourists are not particularly aware of the risks around volcanoes and try and push their luck and get a little bit too close. But in, generally, in general, actually, in volcanic regions, as long as tourism is well managed, it's a positive. And it is a life-changing event to be able to go to an active volcano and see it erupt. I'm, I'm very lucky, I've done that a few times. But actually, people regularly talk about it as being a real sort of highlight of their experience overseas. One last thing to consider is that uh, volcanoes are often attached to uh, geothermal uh, systems. So here we have um, the potential to generate energy. So if you look at some of the uh, volcanoes in Africa and in Iceland and elsewhere, they, they do sometimes have geothermal infrastructure on board. And that's really good. I'll give you an example. Now, Iceland generates most of its electricity, if not all of it now, but through geothermal energy, right? They don't need to burn uh, fossil fuels to make, to make energy because they're tapping it out of the ground. There's an obvious risk to that, of course, which is volcanoes can suddenly erupt. Uh, and we at Bristol have actually looked at some examples where um, geothermal wells have been um, placed on volcanoes that are much more active than people, I think, have realized at the time. And actually, to, to go back to the previous lecture, the, the way we know that is from satellites and watching them deform. And uh, particularly there are volcanoes in um, uh, Ethiopia where people have started putting in uh, geothermal um, infrastructure where actually I think the, the risks are slightly greater than they are considered. Nevertheless, if you can make it work, and it works very well in lots of places, it is a source of um, carbon neutral or close to carbon neutral energy.